Καλησπέρα. Πρώτα θα αρχίσω στα ελληνικά και να σας πω ένα μεγάλο ευχαριστώ στον Φρέικ και στη Μαγάη που με καλέσατε να σας πω αυτό που ζούμε στην Ελλάδα αυτή τη στιγμή. I will now speak English. <laughs> I began by saying good afternoon and a very big thank you to Freik and Marai for inviting me to come and share with you the story of what we are really living in Greece. And I stand before you, and I'm not going to hide it, with a really big thumping heart. And the reason for that is that I'm standing here not just to talk about a small initiative, but I'm talking about the soil and the soul of a nation and a people. And so it's a pretty big thing to do in 18 minutes. <laughs> and I'm going to do my best. I also want, before I go into it, to just ask who in the room is between the age of about 18 to about 30, 32. Can you put your hands up? So I want to dedicate what I'm saying to you. Because I really believe these are the leaders, and we're the ones that need to follow them, right? And I also really want to dedicate what I'm speaking to the Greek young people, the ones that are having to leave our country because they have nothing to do there. They're struggling, and they're having to go out to earn money for their families. And I'm also wanting to dedicate it especially to those that are not leaving, because they're staying. And we've got 55% unemployment of that age group. And when we say unemployment in Greece, we mean no benefit. Okay, so this is resilience that these young people are, are living with. So I just really want to dedicate that to them and to all of you that are in this room. So I'm here wanting to invite you into my world, which is Greece, and I'm standing before you just as a human being, yes, as an Elinida, a Greek woman, and also a citizen of the world, a European and an inhabitant of an earth. <laughs> And I'm offering all of this to you because I feel those are all the layers that our humanity are living in at the moment. And we're standing at a point in our humanity when we really have to make a choice. And to me, the choice is, do we keep going around the same circle? <laughs> do we keep repeating the history? Or do we start to systemically, systemically transform and really, really go for an upgrade in our humanity. And I've been blown away by the bank of the future and banking on the future, if I can play with the words, because everything that's been spoken about, we are so living uh, firsthand in Greece. So let me try and take us a little bit into the, the story. Um, and I've, I've tried, you know, in Greece we talk in spirals, <laughs> so I'm going to try and talk more s structurally. And I want to break the story into three different tales. There's a waking up part to what I'm sharing with you. There's a dying system part. And there's a birthing of new life. And this is all happening simultaneously. So it's seriously complex. <laughs> it's seriously emotional. And it is seriously full of despair and also inspiration at the same time. I want to begin, really, by talking about the waking up and, and really offer... Ah, oh, cheers. Okay. Do I need to hold this? Okay. Um, and really offer the, w the question of what are we living for or what are we living, yeah, up to as well. This picture is a picture from one of our porias, our You call them protests, but it's people just coming out to show their solidarity, to show their togetherness, and also to show that we are not with our government that is making certain decisions on our behalf. Um, and the waking up was very sudden in Greece, and it was triggered by the credit rating agencies reducing our credit rating. And so from working with legitimate credit and debt, which all our countries get, by the way, it's not just Greece, we ended up in a situation where that kind of legitimacy was pulled. And we found ourselves in another cycle and kind of debt, which really feels to us as Greeks 
a new market of how you keep the current economic system going. And so how does that work? Um, it basically works that you change from having legitimate credit and debt given to you to being given bailout memorandums, which is what they're called. And every few months, we Greek people go through this horrific, insulting process of having to have these bailout memorandums with the austerity measures, which will never be paid back. And so it's a, it's a ever decreasing or ever, you know, a cycle going downwards. And so what we have is this incredible triangle, which a lot of people don't really understand. Because a lot of people believe in Europe that it is your taxpayers' money that is coming to us as the bailouts. And so you get this incredible media that you're getting in this part of the world that is saying that it is your money that is coming to us lazy, corrupt, tax evading Greeks, right? Um, and because what do we do? You've been there on holiday. You've seen us drink coffee and ouzo all the time and play with a comboloi. So what is really going on, and this is a little bit of a triangle, and I'm going to really simplify it. Is you've got the IMF. That's one of our players, the um, International Monetary Fund. They are the ones that give the legitimate credit to all of our countries, folk. They are selling that credit to countries that have the legitimacy of the credit for about 2%, because I'll give you some figures. They then actually sell it to us and the other pigs, remember Portugal, Ireland, Spain, and Greece, for about 5 to 5.5%. It's easy maths. 3% profit? Not a bad profit, eh? Nice new business. And look at the GDP. Look at the GDP of certain countries. They're going up and certain countries are going down. So the wake-up call was really, really real for us. And it was really, really sudden. So I want to talk a little bit about the what's dying and what is the fight really about. What it feels like for many of us Greeks is that the fight has to do with keeping an economic system that is dying. In 2008, we felt the crack in the pillar of our present civilization. Our whole lives have coalesced around making money, and our safety, our security of who we are is based on that pillar. It got cracked. And somehow, it's on a life support system, but you are still trying to keep it going. Why? Because we're afraid of what we don't know. And today, you've heard story after story that there is alternatives, right? And we're already living them. So it's not like we're not living them. So the fight for us is really feeling like we need these markets of keeping that money system going through the system. Because <laughs> how do you keep the banking system going after what happened when the bubble burst, right? I want to talk a little bit about the impact of this. That what does it mean for human beings? What does it mean for Greeks, for citizens of Greece? What is the impact of that dying system? And I'm showing you some pictures. We are seeing people looking in the garbage for food. We are starting, if you have leftovers, to put them in bags and put them by the garbage somewhere respectful for somebody to come and get them. We are seeing an incredible increase in our homelessness. We are not a country that had homelessness. You are seeing incredible reductions in pensions. People who have worked all their lives are hardly earning anything. You are actually seeing many of our social systems completely disintegrating. I want to give you one example. Our national health system is not paying our pharmacists enough or regularly or at all for the actual medication that they give 
you used to be able to get your meds for free. So if you don't have money to buy your medicine, you can't have it now. The pharmaceutical companies are not giving the credit to our pharmacies, so they cannot buy it in advance. So if you don't pay for it in advance, you don't get it. What do you say to the little old lady who's earning about 450 euros a month? It's pretty tough. So the impact on human beings is massive, and there is an incredible despair and hopelessness, which is creating an inertia, and it's very, very dangerous. I just wanted to give you some statistics. I'm not going to go into a great big hoo-ha about it, but our GDP is um, down by 7%. There's a brilliant article from, uh, um, that was brought out by the BBC about the parallels between what was happening in Germany in the 1930s and what is happening now in Greece. It is a magnificent um, article to look at um, because it's really bringing through the, the, the damage that the austerity is actually doing. We're at 26% overall unemployment, and we are at 55% uh, unemployment for our young people. Um, our pensions have been cut, and the, the homelessness rate doesn't look great, but it's massive for us because we didn't have them. The suicide is unbelievable and the most shocking. Um, we've had 1,300 suicides just this year. And then the last one I really want to speak to, because this is the Golden Dawn Party, which is a far-right party where we are seeing incredibly new levels of violence um, happening um, throughout the country. And so it is something that is really, really worrying us because you're seeing, again, the pattern of as people lose their security and they feel frightened, we're looking for somewhere to go. And so you either decide to go towards fear or towards love. And there is a percentage of people that are just absolutely full of the fear. And so this is just a scene from, from um, the gentleman that shot himself in Sindagma Square. And that was part of his, uh, th that quote, it's an actual quote um, from what he wrote in his suicide note where he was basically saying this is the most that I can do so that I, I don't want to I just don't want to end up in the garbage and, and looking for my food. So I'm doing this as a form of self-respect. And this is a picture of one of our young peoples who are basically, you know, they are actually really on the edge with what is happening, but hanging in there. So I want to shift now for the last five minutes that I've got to actually some of the birthing of the new life. Because there is also, within what I've just been talking about, an incredible amount of new inspiration and new life that's coming through. Um, the first one that is just incredible, and all of these inspirations, I want to offer them to you as new currencies. These are the currencies of the bank of the future. <laughs> okay, this is what we're really, really living. So the first one is relationship. Um, between people and land. In Greek, we have a word called philotimo. And philotimo is a very important word. It actually means friend of honor, but it's much more than that. It's about interconnectivity. If I hurt you, I hurt myself. Why? Because I can only see who I am in your eyes. <laughs> so I am interconnected with you. We are starting to live philotimo. Many Greeks were talking about how we had lost our philotimo. It is absolutely at the core of our roots. We don't need all these laws when we have philotimo. If I care about you, and I care what's happening to you, and you care what's happening to me, I don't need so much to be monitored and evaluated by. We also have another word in Greek, and it's parea. Parea is when good friends come together and have a good time. You drink, you eat, you laugh, you cry, you live life. A lot of that is happening in Greece. And why that's happening, I mean, I, it was the, um, I love the Lydia thing that we, we heard earlier about playing, it was from the TEDx talk. Um, you know, we actually are dealing with the, the despair through being in Parea. But something else happens in Parea, innovation happens. Because the ideas that you kick around as friends start to work. You start to try stuff out. 
The other really big one is there is starting to be a movement of young people and all ages actually moving from the urban areas into the rural areas. So a new or going back to the roots of our, of our land. There's no reason for us to import food. Um, we've got two growing seasons. We can live. We've got fish. We've got what we need. But we've gotten into a system where we actually are importing a great one that freaked me out last year was we bought 1.5 million worth of olive oil from Germany last year. I don't know about you guys, I haven't seen many olives growing there. But that's part of the madness that our economic system has gotten us into, our globalized economic system. So another trend which has been absolutely amazing to see is going from our farmers to direct sales. These are our potato farmers who basically got angry and said, we are not selling our potatoes at that price out into the market because it's so low, we're going to sell directly to our people. What did they do? They set up a website. You can go on the website, you can say, I live in Tricala, I would like a delivery of potatoes. They actually see how many people, they come and you buy directly from them. Our wheat farmers are following, our olive farmers are following. So we are going direct sales. It is seriously more affordable to do it that way. And it makes sense. It's local. When you come to the point that we have come to, you become ecology. You become nature again. You think local and you act local. You start to talk to each other as neighbors. You start to help out one another. Um, another trend is the self-organizing. I have been working with participation, and I've used this word lots of time in lots of parts of the world, and now I'm living it real, real time. <laughs> you see a problem, you do something about it. You don't talk to the authorities, you don't wait for the system, you are the system, you do something about that. You just respond. So last year, we were coming into the winter months, and um, a man, said, we got to do something about our homeless people. It's getting cold. They have nowhere to go. So he posted on Facebook, I'm going down to Sindagma. I'm going down with whatever I can find in my house. Who wants to join me? And he started a whole movement of how we took care of our homeless people last year. This year, there are some shelters that have been created um, it's, uh, you know, that, that are helping people. And so everything, you guys, is happening from citizen agency. Very little is coming from anywhere else, and you just respond. Your neighbor gets their electricity cut off because we're being taxed for our, elect um, our electricity. We have extra austerity taxes, and they can't pay it. Well, what are you going to do, leave a person in the darkness? So you go and you help them. <laughs> um, so there's a lot that's happening just from citizens helping and self-organizing. This is a picture of the Atenistas, a group of Athenians that come together. The crowdfunding that we heard. You know, one of the ways in which we're keeping our city clean is we're going to go to a park and we're going to do something. I'm going to get, you know, we might want to paint some um, fences or we might, if everybody brings a pot of paint, which is three or four euros, then we can get it done. <laughs> it's another form of crowdfunding, right? You bring the resources that you have. Okay, I'm over time now. Rediscovering Agora, and I'm going to go over time, I'm sorry, but rediscovering Agora is really, really important. You guys heard about complementary currencies. In, in Greece, we have 34 complementary currency systems throughout the country, and they are growing. This is how some people are actually putting food on their tables. So it's not a cool idea that some, you know, visionaries are doing. This is necessity, and it's working. And we heard earlier about the diversity of the mon money. Let's have diverse. So last two weekends ago, we had a beautiful festival where all of these, and self-organized again, all of these currencies came together. And people came together to learn what is happening and who has what currency and how can we even start to exchange with the currencies. So there's something about it going to scale already. But they're very nascent, they're very young. Collaboration and collaborative initiatives. Um, the one that we're working with, the systemic innovation zone, a really, really important element is how do we learn practices of collaboration? How do we learn to trust one another and really start to work together? 
And so we're working on different initiatives with young people. How do we just come together and start to kick around ideas and turn that from an idea into reality? Um, and also we are planning lots of learning journeys because one of the things we really feel is how can you guys come and learn from what we're pioneering and living? <laughs> because it's going to happen and it doesn't have to happen so severely. So how can we learn fast enough? And I'm going to end here. And this says, erotas y tipota, love or nothing. <laughs> There's something about where we are in Greece at the moment and where we are in our humanity that we seriously, seriously need to make a decision. And by the way, the word krisis, krisis in Greek, crisis in English, does not mean a problem. It means take a stance. Decide and take a stance. So yes, in Greece, we are in crisis. We are taking a stance. And so I leave you with the questions. What do you guys need to wake up to? What do you need to let go of and let die? <laughs> and what are you waiting to birth? And I say it in Greek. Ti perimenete, arhiste. What are you waiting for? Start. Thank you.